Continue on with Fief. We're gonna do an election here. Okay, so, um, way elections work, we do bishops first, and there is one bishop up for election. That is up here in this bishopric. Um, you can see, you know, it's a pretty diverse one. Uh, yellow controls the seat of the bishopric and two other villages. Uh, black controls a couple of villages. Green controls one. Now, for the bishop election, you can see here, um, your candidate cannot be a bishop, cannot be married, um, not a king, not a captive, and not excommunicated. Okay. All right. So then we have votes. Two votes for controlling the bishop's principal village, one for each other, two votes for a bishop, and then three votes for a cardinal. Now how this works is you go in turn order and players put a candidate up for that bishopric. In this case, yellow puts up uh, Philippe. White has no candidates because they have no males. Females aren't eligible. Green. Their only eligible candidate here is Charles because Francois already is a bishop and of course Isabel is not a male lord or a male male lord. Okay, whatever. She's a lady. Uh, blue. Can't put up Baudouin, he's already a bishop. Can't put up Gavin because he's married. They're gonna throw Eric up. Over to Pink. Othan's the only eligible candidate. And then down to black. Their only eligible candidate here is going to be uh, the uh, Okay. Now I put a die here because I've counted up the votes. Um, and that dies how many votes each faction has. Now, um, we know, you know, for example, blue has two votes. And they're allied with white, who has one vote. So they have three total for their faction. Okay. Um, yellow has four votes, and they're allied with uh, pink, who has two votes. So they have six total. Finally, black has five, and they're allied with, let me find them, uh, with green, who has... Green has three. So green and black have the most votes, eight votes. Okay. Um, the yellow and pink factions have six. So it's going to be up to the white and blue faction. I did some, you know, kind of, hey, let's do this. You know, elect my, you know, elect Eric as bishop. And, you know, yellow and, and, and you know, pink said no. Black and green said no. Um... So, you know, did some jockeying. Eventually, um, the white, the white faction threw their weight um, into um, the yellow candidate, Philippe, um, and, or not, not the yellow. I'm sorry, the the green candidate, who is um, Charles. Uh, the reason they did that, even though they're right now in direct conflict is that they feel that's the weaker faction. Um, and they would rather have the weaker faction have that vote, uh, that bishopric right now, than, um, than the stronger faction, uh, which, you know, which they feel is the pink, uh, you know, the pink and the, the yellow, they feel are much stronger. So they'd rather have the, the that faction have it. So um, the total votes then... Um, Go uh, green three, white one, that's four, black five, that's nine, and then blue has uh, two, that's eleven. Eleven versus six. Now these can go different ways. You could, um, uh, you have multiple candidates get, you know, you have four, three, four, five candidates all get different votes, and there's, there's markers for this. Um, so you put, um, basically you throw your vote on a candidate, 
Uh, you see they're all the same side on the back is um, either a decoy, which I believe is the black, or the white is that's who we're putting all our roads behind. Um, and you can have some intrigue there with that um, as well. So, you know, there's a possibility of that. However, when you count the raw votes and you look at alliances, alliances are going to, you know, vote as a block. There's no reason for them not to vote as a block. Now, well, I shouldn't say that. There is a reason if they plan on betraying their ally, which is actually relatively easy in this game. You can attack your ally. You can't break the alliance, but you can attack your ally. Um, so, you know... Um, you know, for example, you know, blue could say, okay, you've, white, you've left your stronghold undefended. We're going to go take it, even though we're hellhide with you. Um, so there's, you know, there is that possibility. And I think that's kind of what makes it more interesting than, than maybe it, it you know, it's it, the generic kind of feel of it is, um, is that there is the alliances and how they work. Um, and there's definitely, I can see, uh, a lot of uh, ability to, you know, betray um, your alliance and, you know, make deals with other people. Kind of like that. Um, you know, well, I, I really do like that. I think it, it, it makes the game better than, you know, it's kind of simplistic, you know, state is uh, and generic state. You know, none of these... No factions have any special abilities or anything. There's, they're all the same. Um, so, you know, it gives it a little bit of uh, a flavor that I like. Um, anyway, so I will assign that. Uh, let's see if, I think there might be an election for a king. I will check. There's not going to be an election for a pope. Because in order to elect a pope, I believe there has to be at least two cardinals. Um, and... Yeah, for a pope, at least two cardinals who are not captive must be in play. There's only one cardinal in play right now, so there cannot be a po uh, papal election at this point. Um, all right. All right, so uh, we're going to try and elect a king. Okay, so um, a king has to be a titled lord uh, and can't be a uh, bishop uh, or cardinal or pope, not captive or excommunicated. So there's actually very few candidates here. Yellow has no candidate because uh, Philippe is not a title lord. White has no candidates. They're two ladies. Um, green has no candidates because Charles and Francois are both bishops. Maybe that's why... Uh, White uh, and blue through the uh, bishop over there, I guess. Keep them from being eligible. Okay, blue has one candidate, and that's Gavin. He's a titled lord. Um, Budwain's not eligible because he's a bishop. Eric has no titles. Or Eric. Um, pink has one candidate, and that's Henri. Um, he's titled. Uh, Lambert is a bishop, and Othan has no title. Over to black, uh, Thierry uh, is the only eligible because Arthur has no title and Quentin is a bishop. So there's actually only a couple of candidates here. We're looking at three candidates. All right, three, two, three. So our three candidates are Gavin, Henri, and Thierry. Um, Thierry, yeah, I know, my French sucks. What can I say? Um, it's been a long time. Okay, uh, all right, so I did some voting. Here's the total votes, um, per faction. It's basically everybody has two votes, except the yellow faction and the white faction. And this, in essence, makes a stalemate. Um, because, um, you know, the black faction with their candidate... Uh, in green are four have four votes. Um, the um, blue faction and the white faction have three votes. The yellow and uh, pink have two each. Um, it was well, actually it wasn't a stalemate. I miscalculated. 
Oops, I gotta redo it. I must have miscalculated votes. I'll be back. Okay, going back to the the uh, election for the king. Okay, so kind of forgot because I stepped away. What's, what happened here is that the black and green faction have four total votes, which they assigned to Thierry. Um, the uh, pink and green faction have four votes. Um, so they're going to assign North, or I'm sorry, the yellow, see that's where I get screwed up. The yellow and pink faction have three votes, which they assign to Henri. So that would seem that, you know, the, the blue white faction has three votes. They could determine the election and they do. They give one vote to Henri and two to their own candidate. That makes a tie between Henri with four and Thierry with four, that means there's n no king elected, um, which, you know, is what um, what they want at this point. Um, they, there's no point giving a king out right now. So, um, all right, that is the elections. I'm going to load this one up.